I would never spend more money on a suit than I would my mind. I can, can't replace my mind, I only have one. I wanted to start the program by telling you I love you and I thank God for you. Benny, I am absolutely thrilled, amazed, and honored to be here on the program with you today to talk about Thieves, my book Thieves. And get a pen and paper right now, precious things, because you'll be writing things down. He's sending you, of course, his book and so forth, but he says a lot more than what's in the book, I think, sometimes. Well, Benny, Thieves is the true story, as you know, of the safe robbery of your friend, the television pastor, Mike Murdoch. So it covers everything that led up to the safe robbery, the years that I spent on the run from television pastor, uh, and of course, you know, all of the details in between. So that's, you know, that's really what Thieves is. I guess my biggest question would be to you, Mike, uh, how has Thieves impacted you a number of months since its release date? A hopelessness came into me toward people, and my mind began to feel that all of my labor was in vain. The people closest to me were not even affected by my persuasions. The people I prayed with every day were not even affected by my decisions, by my presence. And I felt like Jesus must have felt with a Judas. Now, that's a little bit unfair, Mike. I'm just telling my true story here. It took everything I know to get money. It took every hour of my life to create money. Is there anything that you would like to go ahead and tell those viewers? Anything that's resting on your heart right now, Mike? I want you to become a faith partner. This is 12 months. 12 months. I'm not talking about just sending a little extra check to help Pastor Benny reach millions. I'm talking about you entering into a covenant. A covenant. A covenant for 12 months. Give God four seasons. Slow down, tiger. If you're not going to trust that part of the Bible, what part are you going to believe? If you've chosen to doubt a chapter in the Bible, don't, shout, don't, don't doubt the blessing chapter. If you just have to doubt the Bible, doubt the hell chapter. Don't doubt the, the money chapter. If you just have to doubt God, don't doubt when he says, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. It's the best protection during this economy that we're facing. But, uh, turning to you for a second, Benny, I, you seem to be on with Mike very frequently. He talks a lot about seed giving. Do you, do you understand this? And if you do, can you, can you explain it to us? Can you explain it to me? Why is it that uh, sowing seed, financial seed, gives favor? Why? God responds to money. The only thing that pleasures God is cash. Okay, I get the picture. Um, Benny, if you, if you don't mind me asking, and for everybody at home, how it does, I mean, both of you guys are kind of the wealthiest guys on Christian television. Benny, I've, I've heard you're, you're a billionaire. How, how does a mega ministry like this start, if you, if you don't mind me asking? Can you tell us? Right, the ministry of Benny Hinn responds to an iFiles investigation, which revealed two heroin-related deaths within his ministry. At the time, Benny Hinn had agreed to talk to, to us in person about his church, but canceled after seeing our report last week. It's quite simple. See, Jesus said, by the fruits you will know them. And uh, just watch the person's fruits. If they uh, display uh, a clean life, a Christian character, if they show true Christianity, then they're really for real. Was that you handing the pipe to that man at that table? Uh, okay, Benny. Well, um, t t tell us more. So how did this become? How do you turn that into a mega ministry? How did we get there? Powerful. Today, though, I want to hear about receiving. But first, sir, there's other things in your heart today I want to hear. <gasps> How did you know? <laughs> that was just what I wanted. And I'm going to pray for you right there. I'm asking every partner with this ministry.
plant a seed of 360. And whoever is watching, too. Every person, yep. every person, every person watching. If you've never planted a seed, I want you to plant a seed of $365 in the work of God. It's to reach souls. Absolutely. On your check, or if you're sowing by bank card, you can sow right now. And the quicker your seed gets in the soil, the quicker the harvest will grow. Your miracle is coming towards you or going past you, you every day. Favor? Would you sing that for me right now? Yes. Please, just for that first part. Different. Your miracle is coming towards you. Uh, it's coming towards you or going past you every day. Oh, isn't that powerful? <laughs> you are blessing my socks mm. up. I'm loving this. I want to love and be loved. As you plant this seed, as you go to the telephone, even right now, and call us, and even if it's something that takes you three or four weeks, or I want to love and be loved. Three or four months to sow. Call us now and say, I'm one of those planting a seed for uncommon favor for 12 months with God and man. We're rushing the world, by the way. I want to love and be loved. Do it today. A lot of people come to you in very desperate situations. They need healing and the sort. Now, um, Benny, you do take that seriously, at least, don't you? This next story is, uh, well, it, it makes me angry. I'm sure it makes you angry as well when you hear these stories. You can almost call it a protected racket. And I'm talking about televangelists. And, and, and this is me, and this is the part that makes me crazy. When I think of Jesus Christ, and I think of the way we as Christians in many cases worship today, we are so unlike him. So unlike him in so many ways. Would Jesus do any of these things? Would Jesus drive a Bentley? Would Jesus wear a $2,000 suit? I mean, would Jesus buy a, a toilet worth $23,000? Well, how about would he uh, live in a $12.5 million mansion? You cannot fool all the people all the time. So, Benny, it, uh, you know, it does kind of look like uh, some people are catching on, I guess. But nevertheless... I'd like to go ahead and do what I'm here today to do, Mike. I want to first apologize to you. I was a stupid kid at the time that all this happened. A small fact that a lot of people don't know, the so-called safe robbery. Mike, you only had $6 in your safe. You made it feel like there was there was money in there. You, you got me on that one. You got me on that one. But anyhow, today is a big day for me, and uh, it's a big day for you as well, Mike. I've got uh, your money right here. I've got all of it uh, in one stack. So these are three, and you had it in two dollar bills. One, two, three, uh, and you had a note in there with the two dollar bills. But I am here today to honor this and to uh, to give this money back to you, Mike. That I wrote a little song for you. How dumb thou art. <laughs> Mike, that was uncalled for. I, I didn't deserve that. I mean, that's, that's going a little bit under the belt. Um, Mike, just out of curiosity, with the, the $6 that I had, I ran to Mexico, right? I ran to Mexico. I got investigators calling my family. I can't go home for years. How much did you tell people that you lost, Mike? Million. Excuse me? How much? Million. Million. Mike, what did you what did you do with all that money? I was able to buy a beautiful Cessna Citation jet cash. A few months later, bought another jet worth three times what that one was. A little bit later, bought a third jet. Bought them all three. Mike, I can appreciate that, but uh, I don't die honestly. I don't believe you. I don't think the only thing that you were buying was jet planes. I mean, even back uh, even back then, when I was around, I remember at your your Paradise Mansion. 
to do some kind of freaky, maybe that's a bad word. Uh, there was a little bit of sex stuff going on. Mike, how is it? Did she respond to, to that? I'm 64. I've been single 30 years. God himself yeah, it's not good for men to says, yeah. I am not enough for Adam. Yeah. He needs a woman. You must identify the divine domain where God has made you king. God doesn't mind you experimenting and exploring. He understands that. The Bible said he knew we were but flesh. Yeah. Sometimes I go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go by a telephone post and want to hug it. You know, I just I said, sometimes I go crazy. <laughs> Let me assure you, none of us are units. <laughs> Mike, you're a pastor. He's a pastor. I just found that out. <laughs> I've known you all those years. Didn't know you actually had a church. <laughs> Okay, so Mike, what I'm here today to do is to, uh, is to give you your money back, uh, your six bucks. I've got an envelope here. Uh, you put your uh, put your name on. I'm going to get your address on there. So I'm putting these uh, I'm putting these two dollar bills in the envelope, Mike, just so you can you can see me do that. And I'm adding one dollar to it uh, for interest or good measure. Uh, more than that, I just like the number seven, to be frank with you. So I'm I'm sticking that in there as well, Mike. House. You're going to give us money when you die. Give me my money early. I'm leaving. I'm getting out of here. What did you just say to me, Mike? Give me my money early. I'm leaving. I'm getting out of here. Don't you don't you go getting all like that on me, Mike. If you if you do that, I'll take the seven dollars out the envelope. I mean, this is you know, I mean, this is straight. If you you want the money or do you not want the money, Mike? Now let me explain something. When Elijah went to the widow of Zarephath, she had one meal left. He didn't say keep it. You need it more than I do. Okay, man, we're done. We're done. I'm packing up the money. I'm stopping you right there, Mike, because you ain't Elijah and I ain't the widow of Seraphim. But you can. Uh, you got seven dollars coming to you, so you can look forward to that. Benny, I've enjoyed being on your program. I thank you for having me today, and uh, I've had a fantastic time here with both of you, gentlemen, Mike. Seven bucks is on the way. All right, so this day is kind of a big deal for me. This is the day that I'm actually paying back television evangelist Mike Murdoch. And uh, just to show you all that I mean absolute business, uh, I got it. I, inside of his safe, there was six bucks and a bunch of bundles of like copy paper bound with rubber bands. He told people that I took millions. You have to read the book to figure that out. And I got it. Uh, I got it clipped to a note here. You read the book, you'll you'll have a good idea what my note says. But uh, so I'm packing that up, Mike. You got this on your way to you. No joke. This is happening now. This is 13 years in the making, right here. Licked and everything by me goes inside the mailbox. These, as far as I know. There's nothing else in the world like it. Story of a guy, me, that guy, robbing a television pastor, running to Mexico, and every gritty deal, detail, from start to finish. Trey, you trying to get that $7 back out of there? Give it up, man. All right, all right, I'm coming, coming.